Hello Floss Tube. This is Kate Batum Ice and welcome back to my Floss Tube channel. Man, it feels like a lifetime has gone by since the last time that I saw you guys. Uh, I totally have meant to film a Floss Tube for the last probably three or four weekends in a row and just for one reason or another it's it's not happened. So I'm highly unprepared today for this floss tube um, because if I had taken the time to try to prepare and get everything organized, I probably wouldn't be here right now and it would be another weekend where I just didn't do a floss tube. So here I am. I want to say welcome to everyone. Um, welcome if you're new. Thank you for checking me out. I hope you um, enjoy and maybe consider subscribing. Um, for everyone who's continued to keep watching my videos as sporadic as they are, I just want to say thank you so much and welcome and um, let's just, let's get started. Um, I do have a laundry list of excuses for you guys, so I feel kind of like, um, it's like when you're a kid and you didn't get your homework done and you've got to like try to explain yourself to your teacher, but this time I'm gonna do like truths and not just like, oh, my dog ate my homework. Just kidding. But um, but really, so since I last saw you, oh my gosh, I went to StitchCon. That was great. Um, I had a blast and I might talk a little bit about it in a second. Um, then I went on a family vacation to Minnesota. That was really fun. Um, we were lucky our entire family got to get together. We're getting to the point where we're all adults and have lives and stuff. So it's sometimes hard to get everyone together. Um, then Frog Warts. I attended the Black Needle Society Frog Warts retreat and I was looking so forward to it y'all I prepped I was so ready I had a spreadsheet I was so excited and y'all I got so sick <laughs> I got to participate for a day and then I really just I couldn't and it makes me so sad I was looking so forward to that retreat um yeah I got a a cold that turned into a sinus infection, which turned into a pretty high fever during frog wars. It just, but we're all better now, obviously. I'm feeling much better. Um, and then from there, it's just been like recovery from getting so sick. And then, I don't know. Is anyone else experiencing that? Where like, even if you're getting like just a cold, it seems to be really bad I feel this is just my pet theory but like I feel like I went the whole year being so careful I didn't even get a sniffle during 2020 just because we were all being careful and then it's like I got a tiny little cold that should be no big deal and my body was like oh my god it's time it just whatever is anyone else experiencing that because it whatever it was horrible it was just a cold shouldn't have been a big deal um anyways enough about that so now I'm here and it's five minutes and well four minutes in and I haven't even brought up stitching so let's talk about stitch con just for a second it's been so so long in the past at this point I feel like I don't need to recap what happened. I went to weekend A. You probably have seen it in plenty of other videos. But what I do want to make sure I mention is that I had a fantastic table. And I so enjoyed the company of these women at my table. Um, it, was, it was what I needed. It gave me some energy and revitalized my love for this craft and I just, I can't explain it. So at my table was Rika, House of Stitch and Stash. She's fierce. She's 
a warrior woman and she's amazing so you should go check her out if you haven't she's a much bigger channel than i am so if you don't know her i don't know how you got here um <laughs> but um then rocio cocohama citry just the sweetest kindest person and i'm so thankful to have gotten to sit right next to her during the weekend and to meet her in person we chat sometimes online but it was great to meet her in person and then there was Lydia. Lydia has a floss tube. It's called Lydia's Leisurely Stitching. Um, I'll make sure to put a link below. And Lydia, she's so sly. She comes off as this quiet little mouse, but once we got into that late night stitching room and got her over there, she really broke out of her shell. She's doing a really amazing huge full coverage head. it is just beautiful I don't remember what it's called or anything but gorgeous so you definitely need to go check out her channel because it's beautiful um and then last but not least is Miss Lily Miss Lily does not have a floss tube but she's a fountain of just joy and it was amazing to be around her so um, anyways, I had a great time meeting those, those women, meeting a lot of other people as well at StitchCon. It was, it was amazing. Um, and that's about all I have to say about that because I don't want to ramble on about stuff you already know. Um, okay, so I already told you about the frog warts fiasco. Don't need to cover that. Why don't we just get into stitching? Why don't we start it off really great with a finish I have finished lovebirds by Riolis isn't it beautiful I am very glad to have it done <laughs> I enjoyed this stitch um, it's my first time using wool threads and so it was really nice to um, experience that. It was a good easy stitch for me um, because it's on Ada and there's some good blocks of color in there. Um, but I am glad to have it done. The colors are gorgeous. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Um... It's probably just going to go rolled up in my drawer like most things do, so. Alright. I am back. Sorry about that. I just needed to check and make sure that my critters were not getting into things that they shouldn't. My husband is outside mowing, so I have to keep an eye on them. Um, we just made a blueberry loaf. Like, we just used blueberry muffin mix. And I say we like I had anything to do with it. It was my husband. But he put it in a loaf pan instead of muffins. And it, so, side note, story time, very quickly. Um, <laughs> once upon a time, we made blueberry muffins. And we pushed them all the way to the back of the counter and covered them with a cloth to let them cool down a bit. And I went to go take a shower. When I got out of the shower, the... Um, cloth was laying in the middle of the kitchen which was suspect so I walked over and looked on the counter and the muffin tin was there and it had not moved it was still pushed all the way back but there were zero muffins left um, and there was no trace of any muffin or any paper so Miss Della likes blueberry muffins <laughs> That's really what I was worried about. That blueberry loaf, um, luckily he was brilliant as always and put it up in a cabinet so we don't really have to worry about it, but that's what I thought was going to go missing. Okay, let's get back to stitching. So um, I showed you my finish of Lovebirds. That's so exciting. And I have lots of whips. Okay, so the first one that I wanna talk about is Dark Queen of the Sea. 
um, by Autumn Lane Stitchery. And I'm not going to pull it out because I have it on um, my scroll rods ready for beading because the last part of it, which is back stitch and beading, are coming out today. I will put a picture of where it is up here while I'm talking. Um, so part of me filming a floss tube right now is also like I cannot wait for this release to happen. It's so I need to fill my time. <laughs> so I decided to film a floss tube while I could before I got distracted by it. Um, it hadn't come out yet at the time I pushed play. So, but anyways, she is looking amazing. Um, she is huge her tentacles were a massive effort but I am so happy to have caught up and to be caught up and be ready for this last drop with the last bit of embellishments and fun stuff and then she's done and I am so excited for that okay so the next whip that I have out here is Tiger Lily by Nora Corbett And this is where I am on her. So I don't remember where she was last time that I saw y'all, but um, I've been working on finishing. I just want to knock out the one over one skin. <laughs> so her legs are the last little bit. So I stitched enough to be able to get over to where her legs are. And I have this one almost done and I have the lighter color on this one. So here is Tiger Lily. She's one of my zombie runs. Also, I am doing um, Uno or Uno, whatever, and Semi Sane Sisters um, this month. And it's just very nice for me because they, they need four whips um, to be designated for use in that game. And Zombie Run, Run has four whips. So I just put the same four <laughs> in you know, so I can hopefully work on that game and um, and zombie run at the same time. I'm losing my words. Um, oh, next up I have Little Women by Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. And I am still on the first part. <laughs> So she has the first three sections released at this point. The fourth section will come out in August sometime. Hopefully I'll be able to get caught up with it um, in August. The last release is in September. So I want to get caught up in August. I'm pretty much caught up on the reading, I think. I had jury duty last Friday, so I got a lot read on Friday um there <laughs> so I think I'm caught up on the reading I need to double check what chapters we're supposed to be doing this time around but um the colors on this are just gorgeous they're so bright I love it there's a giant house in the middle of it and I'm honestly I'm looking really forward to stitching that house mm. just gotta get there gotta get there okay what is next next up is Beauty and the Beast I haven't even pulled it out of the bag in quite a few weeks but y'all this should have a lot more done on it than the last time you saw it on here So oh, we have some big milestones done. So the castle is now done. There's some buildings and there's like some little bit of path that comes down further here, but I'm I'm counting the castle is done. The rainbow is done. I've stitched all of the pink flowers that are in this top corner. Now it's just green and then it goes into there's a lamp post over here. And yeah, it's, I always have a hard time once I pull this one out, I have such a hard time putting it back away. 
<laughs> I just want to keep stitching on it once I start going. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm definitely going to get this page finished this year. I would really like to be able to focus on it some more. I've been doing pretty good. I've used it as my focus whip in semi-sane every month. So I've gotten at least a thousand stitches a month on it, which is great. I was kind of hoping to get some more though. So we'll see if this last part of the year I'll be able to push through a little bit more. Um, what else do I have over here? Garden in blue. So, dun, 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 dun. garden in blue. So I have the border all the way done now. I don't, I don't remember if that was the case last time I showed it to you. So. We'll just pretend it isn't. So I got the border all the way done. Um, and I'm I'm so excited about that. I'm, I think last time I had gotten it where I knew it matched up, but I didn't actually finish all of it. And then I got this first block completely done. And I'm pretty um, well on my way with the second block. There's this center part is all a big flower. And there's nine total of those blocks. So we're getting there. This is my oldest whip. <laughs> so I am motivated to get it done. Plus it should be getting some love this month because of Uno, which is great. Okay, I think that's my main whips with the exception of Magic is on the Way by Lola Lada Shop and I am so excited to show you guys this. I have finished all the X's on it and started doing the back stitch. You guys, I, I'm so happy with how this is turning out. So I, I got the back stitch done on this whole section of under under the stairs, the cupboard under the stairs, um, and then started you know outlining some of the stairs and paneling. I've got to fill in in between all of these rails. There's some uh, back stitch, a straight stitch, whatever you want to call it, design work. And then, of course, up here we've got Hedwig has to be backstitched. And then this whole area, <laughs> there's um, Hogwarts and some words. But I am so happy with this. It looks like nothing. <laughs> it looks like a blur of color before the backstitch. And, I mean, I will say this is not easy. <laughs> If you're a beginner stitcher, I would not recommend <laughs> this piece um, just for the back stitching because I actually had to stitch and then take out and restitch some of these things. So you can see like up here, there's two lines that are really close together up at the top and they're um, on a diagonal. And then in the shelves, there's the same thing. So they're like two lines really close together on the shelves. And those, when it's on the diagonal, I tried to do it like I normally would do back stitching, um, where the corners meet, you know. So if it's like over three down two, I would do that all in one stitch and then move to the next one. What ended up happening was it looked really funky and the lines were super wobbly, um, especially because there were two of them right next to each other. It just, um, the diagonals aren't in a good, like even breakdown of stitches, if that makes sense. So um, I ended up couching some of those diagonals. I took out the back stitches and couched them down, which held them a little bit closer together 
um, and a little bit straighter. They're still wobbly, but I think it goes okay with the kind of design. It, it doesn't look terrible. If you're a perfectionist and you need those lines to be perfectly straight, I mean, good luck. I hope it works out well for you, but it did not for me. But I think it works out, and I'm super happy with it. Okay, so that's the stitching I have to show you. I have some plans. <laughs> Go figure. Um, so if I was still in No New Starts, the competition, um, if you are new here, um, there's a challenge, No New Starts 2021, and I still in my mind I'm in it but I'm technically out of the challenge because I stitched two gifts earlier this year and those were technically starts and so it throws you out of the challenge but I'm still trying to abide by it you do get per the rules one new start for the year I would have used it <laughs> I'm using my one new start for the year <laughs> So um, I got sucked in by the Cryptid Cell by the Witchy Stitcher and the border of it just came out right as I was about to put my phone in Do Not Disturb so I could record. So the, the border is out and then I believe it's September 1st. She's giving us a whole month to do the border before, um, before we get into the actual mystery style part of it. But I am, I would have used my new start for this because I couldn't resist it. I, I don't know. I'm gonna show you the fabric I'm using is vintage brown linen. It's 40 counts by XG Designs. It's just this really nicely like modeled icky spooky brown fabric. I think it'll look really good with this style. And so again, if you are new here, <laughs> I have personally, uh, uh, I have I've created a set of rules for myself and I try very hard to stick to them. So. One of them is no more than 15. That's one five active whips at a time. Um, and I always stick to that pretty much. Then another one is that I like to, throughout the year, whittle down my number of whips by um, finishing two to start one new one. I try to do that throughout the year and then in mania I refill myself back up to 15. So in order to start that cryptid cell I'm not going to start the border until I have finished two things. So I'm hoping, hoping, hoping to finish Dark Queen of the Sea like relatively quickly this month and then also magic is on the way really pretty quickly and that way I can start on the border and get it all done before the first release in September. Um, I have some haul. Do you guys want to see haul? I'll do it. If you guys don't want to see haul because some people aren't into that, that's fine. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm really happy that you decided to um, come and chat with me for a little bit today. For anyone who's interested in haul, here we go. I got some 46 count Rosmerta fabric by Under the Sea. This I got at StitchCon. And it's it doesn't really show up super great on here, but it is a blush pink with some like really light brown modeling. And I feel like you can kind of see the brown. Um, and it is gorgeous. Every time I see someone stitching something on Rosmerta, I get jealous of it. <laughs> so when I saw it, and I saw it in 46 count, which is my jam, um, 
I decided I needed to to pick it up. All right, I got this is Fiber on a Whim Night Sky Linen. It's 32 count. And I got this with the intention of um, Stitching Book Club is doing The Great Gatsby later this year. I think it's going to be later this year. It might even be the start of next year. And she's designing it for black fabric. And um, I, if, if it needs black fabric, I wanted to have something that was darker, which... Um, I could put it on and this is kind of my solution for it. I think, you know, it's obviously not black fabric, but it is dark enough that I think it might work. So we'll see. We'll see when that design starts coming out what I think. Okay. Next up. <laughs> so this fabric. This is Dreams of Spring by Mountain Air. It's 40 count. And I had the thoughts that I might wanna put um, Huckleberry Farm from the Blue Flower on here. That is actually stitched on Slate by Picture This Plus. That's what it's called for. Um, and the picture, the cover photo makes it look really purple. Maybe not quite this purple, but um, the cover photo makes it look more on the purple side. Now I have Slate. I have it, I'm, I'm using it for another project. And that fabric, depending on the lighting, is like a gray purple. <laughs> so um, I got this without, I didn't see it in person. I just saw it online and I got it and I thought maybe it would work. Now I'm thinking it might be a little too purple, but we'll see. I mean, who knows when I'll even get around to stitching, <laughs> stitching that pattern. So something else might come along that looks better on it. In the meantime, speaking of the blue flower, I picked this up at StitchCon, Spring Magic. I love it. I love that giant robin. <laughs> on the fence. Um, next up is a set of things I got on the freebie table. Um, so the first one is the Russian Angel. And I got this because I have this one, the Japanese Angel. I have her stitched and up on my wall. She doesn't have um, the wings or the halo. Um, so it's just the lady with the fan and the bird. And that is hanging on my wall. Um, Miss Ursula stitched it. And I haven't talked about Miss Ursula in a while. Um, she, she unfortunately passed away last year. So I feel very lucky to have been able to get one of her pieces and put it up on my wall. It makes me think of her and the time we spent together. And so this is, like I said, this one I have up on my wall, stitch by Miss Ursula. This one, I would do the same thing. I would take off the halo and the wings and just stitch the lady and her bear. And I would try to fill in the city in the ribbon here um, to fill in where that wing is. If I ever stitch it. <laughs> Who knows? Um, I got, this is called Brick House by The Work Basket. I picked it up off the freebie table. And I just thought it was interesting because I don't see stitches set up like this very often. Like having a big house and a garden, yes. But just the way that it's framed is, the actual piece, the way the piece is framed, it just um, struck me. And then when I opened it up, I realized that pretty much everything in this is um, specialty stitches <laughs> which I didn't know when I picked it up but okay um, this one is called Molly Ransom uh, the, by the Needles Excellency and I 
think the colors are great. Like, I, it's just a really interesting colorway. But also, the words make me smile. Um, which is probably weird. But it's very morbid. And so, it was a 15-year-old girl. She stitched it in 1789. And the verse says, What should I say? Tis yet too soon to seek for heaven or think of death. A flower may fade before tis noon. And I this day may lose my breath. Like you're 15 and you're whatever. I just thought it was awesome. So I got it. Um, this is called Cranberry Sampler. Traditionals by Trisha. I think I would update the colors, but I thought... It was a sweet little sampler. Um, okay, then these are two scores from the freebie table. Sorry, I'm trying to sort through and find all the freebie stuff. Well, first I'm going to show you. This is Ship's Manor Tricks and Treats, and it's just a sweet little Halloween design. I would change the colors or the fabric probably because it is really hard to see it <laughs> on this fabric. It might be the picture, it might be the fabric, it might be both. But I think it's a cute little design. It just needs, needs a little tweak, I think. Um, then I picked up, this is by Cooler Design Studio, Speak to the Earth Sampler. And I really enjoy the sun and moon up here and all these animals. <laughs> so, and the verse says, speak to the earth and it shall teach thee. Ask now the beasts and they shall teach thee. Oh, I missed the top of the verse up here. The first part is, the fowls of the air, they shall teach thee. And the fishes of the sea shall declare. My goodness, I didn't even realize how long this verse was. <laughs> Whatever. I like the animals and I like the sun and moon, so I picked it up. Clearly, I didn't read all the verse. Okay, and then these two are the scores. So, um, they're both Mirabilia limited editions. So, it's not the kits, just the charts, but... Um, the Christmas Elf Fairy and Miss New Year's Fairy. I like the Halloween one too. Um, but these two are pretty. And they were there. I think the Halloween one you can get for free on Hershner's website. I think I saw that the other day, so I probably should just like run over there and grab it quick before. Maybe it's not free. Maybe it's like it's like five dollars or something, but you can download it. Point is, you can get that pattern even though it's a limited edition. You can get it in PDF form, I think, from Hershner's. But anyways, um, so I bought this at StitchCon. Of all the endeavors she undertakes, it's her stitching that yields cherished keepsakes. It is by Talon Emblem. I think it's just called Keepsakes. Yeah, Keepsakes and Tokens. And what got me about this one is in person the model of it. This blue is so, so pretty. <laughs> it really caught my eye. So I will have to do this one in the called fours because that's what drew me. This is Luminous Fiber Arts Friendship Series Playful Cats. And I just thought it was cute. And of course, um, right before I went to StitchCon, we adopted Rutherford. And he's like a really light orange like this cat over here. So um, I turned into a crazy cat lady overnight and had to get it. <laughs> um, okay, so... Next up is Haunted by Luminous Fiber Arts. And this model was really cute. 
I've talked about this before, I think, but I'm not a huge Halloween person. Like, it's not my favorite holiday, but I, for some reason, am so drawn to the aesthetic. <laughs> I just love Halloween designs. <sighs> I don't even decorate for Halloween in my house. I just, not really. I just, well, I don't really decorate for anything, so... But, okay, I have one more piece of haul to share with you guys, and then I'll let you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this is all Kyle's fault. Kyle Rackemeyer, stitching and sound. He was stitching this sampler that he wouldn't tell anyone what it was, and he finally let us know what it was, like, a minute before he finished it. And it is Ada Haslam, or I forget how he said it, Ada Haslam, I don't know if there's pronunciation in here, but um, it's by Samplers Revisited, and it is gorgeous. You should go check out his Instagram, Stitching and Sound, so you can see beautiful pictures of this sampler, this cover doesn't really give it justice especially not through this camera but like these blues here are just gorgeous and um yeah this is a gorgeous sampler i would like to do it soon ish the next like five years maybe <laughs> we'll see um okay so I think that is everything that I have for you guys today. Um, thank you again for everyone who stuck it out through the hall and um, hung out to chat with me a little bit longer. I'm hoping when I stop recording this that I'm going to have a email with the last part of Dark Queen in it. Ah, I've been waiting all day for it. Um, and yeah, I hopefully next time y'all see me, I have one, if not two finishes. I mean, I'm probably cursing myself now and I won't finish anything, but um, anyways, happy stitching, y'all. I hope you have a great day, week, month, however long it is until I next see you. So, bye. Thank you.